Today, basically, um, the video is about uh, teaching you how to loom a hat um, for various sizes. I am a uh, high school teacher, and uh, years ago I set up uh, a knitting club at the school. You know, because of, you know, knitting, crocheting, like fiber arts tend to be a dying art, it seems, and a lot of kids don't know how to do it. And so, um, yes, Cisco, all right. And so, um, we got a whole bunch of kids that decided to come. I assumed that they would know how to actually knit, and most of them did not knit. Now, I am an excellent science teacher and biology teacher. I am a terrible knitting teacher, it would seem. I cannot knit or do things backwards. I have, you know, the person would have to be on my lap so I could actually show them exactly what it is that I'm doing. So, um, the kids, we started to teach them how to knit and they, they ended up uh, getting very frustrated because of course they wanted to be able to knit something right away and how do you do that if you don't know how to knit or curl or do anything like that. So, um, we wanted them to feel a sense of accomplishment and some confidence, you know, quickly because again, the school year is not super long. And so we ended up uh, finding these looms, okay? So now again, these are not the looms that a weaver would you know, naturally consider. Um, I remember as a kid having very small ones like this for, um, I think it was called a corker, and then you know, you'd make the long tubes and then kind of wrap around it and make your rug uh, from way back then. Um, but basically I bought a set of these, uh, and the school bought a set of these uh, for um, the kids. And we taught them how to knit hats, and the kids were able to, you know, knit a hat in like half an hour or, you know, or depending on the size of the hat, uh, very quickly. And so we were able to actually um, donate these hats to charity, or uh, if there were baby hats, this one, for example, the ring, it's got 24 pegs, it would be for uh, a baby, for example. We had larger ones that we did for adults, and so uh, in our my city, we had a men's mission that we did a whole bunch of hats for that we were able to donate in the wintertime and so forth. So. I thought I'd give a lesson on this because every once in a while I want to go back to this and of course you know I forget the little ins and outs and um, of different things so I make myself a video of course to, uh, to remind myself of all of the little uh, bits and bobs that I've got to remember for this. Generally speaking, um, I'm got, I've got um, some, just give me a second, I've just, I've got a, a baby hat size chart. Uh, depending on the child's weight, the head circumference, how long would the length of the hat need to be approximately, and the number of rows that you're actually doing on the actual loom. Uh, and you're using a 24 peg loom, which in my case is this one. This company that I got is uh, Loops and Threads. I bought it from a craft store in Canada, which is called Michaels. Uh, again, in the States, I don't know if you have Michaels in the States or not, but um, uh, basically, the, uh, there are so many different companies with these kind of, uh, of looms, and you can buy them secondhand quite a bit, quite easily as well. Okay, so basically, uh, for a child that's less than a pound, uh, that's So basically, um, typically when I do these hats, I like to use, uh, let's take a look here where the information is, oh, right here. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's, you can see it there. It says basically uh, super bulky or bulky yarn. Uh, again, the thickness is completely uh, dependent on you. Now, you can use thinner yarn and use two strands of it. I have done that before. I find that a little bit irritating, always having to deal with two strands as opposed to one, but it's not, you know, it's not really uh, that much more of a pain. So in this case here, I'm going to take the yarn. I am going to find the end here. There we go. And my cats are going to love this, I'm sure, because they are now down here. So what you're going to do is you're going to notice that when you have your um, your little loom here, there is a section here that uh, to start things off, okay? And you're going to put a slip knot on there. You also want some sort of a hook. Now, usually, again, when you buy a set, a hook does come with it, okay? But you could probably use, I don't know if a crochet hook would work or not, uh, but again, it's something that you need in order to, to lift the loops over, uh, over the pegs, okay? So to make a slip knot, quick reminder there, okay? So I'm going to wrap it around. Okay, my fingers, I'm going to pull it through, all right, and then I'm going to hold on to this thread, okay, 
Now again, I don't need the tail to be that long here, so oh, wrong side. So no, it's going to be that long. Okay. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to tighten it. Okay. We're going to take it off afterwards. All right. So what we need to do basically is we need to do what they call an e wrap in order to cast on so that we can start the actual knitting process. Okay. So I'm going to hold this here. And to do the e-wrap is literally you are just literally going around each peg, okay? And it makes like it's the letter E, which is why they call it that. Okay, so you got one, sorry, yeah, one. I'm just gonna do that. Now you don't want to do it super tight because keep in mind, you want to be able to lift the loop on top of it. Okay. There we go. Yes, my boy. That is my boy Cisco. You know, Alex is on the chair beside me, and he absolutely loves yarn as well. Okay, so you will probably see him at some point. Okay, so once we've done the the first one here, I'm going to put all of these down. Okay, because I need to do. All right, I'm just going to bring out. Oh, there's Neelix. There's my boys. There we call them the Star Trek boys because we love Star Trek. So Cisco came from Deep Space Nine. Neelix is from Voyager. <laughs> Unfortunately, my, my poor, uh, their brother Tuvok passed away recently, and uh, so they're a little bit uh, getting accustomed to that. So the for the cast on, we want to go around a second time, all right, to start things off. So we're going to go around again, all right, quickly enough, all right. Now, in terms of tension, you're going to figure that out very quickly. Okay, I'm wrapping them way too tight. I'm, oop. And again, if it undoes, it all undoes. So you sometimes want to make sure if you can hold on to, oop, hold on to something that it does not. All right. Okay, and then basically I will hold it here with my thumb so that there's no chance of unwrapping. What I tend to do is when I am actually starting to to go over is I will start with the last one because right here is the peg. This is number one. This guy is number 24. I am going to lift number 24 so that in the event, okay, so we lift it over the peg, in the event something should happen, okay, it's not going to all unravel. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to basically just go around. All right. All I'm doing is, oh, and I put it too tight because I'm having fun trying to lift this above. Ah. Okay. Just trying to hopefully, ah, they're much better. Okay. And then as I go, I just kind of push things down. Okay. Because you're going to put the next row to continue on above it. So I just kind of use my fingers, pull it down. Now I find, I love doing this, but I find that if I do too much of this, my the muscles in my forearm get super tight and very painful. So again, you may want to, you know, figure out where your, uh, your okay, no, no, come here, hey, hey, oh, thank you. Okay, so I've done basically the first row. So what I'm going to do is that in order to do a brim, you want it to be anywhere from 6 to 18 rows, again, depending on the size of the hat. So for a baby's hat, I'm not going to do 18 rows, obviously. I'm just going to be doing, I'm going to try with 6, and then I'm going to come back and show you whether or not uh, that works for me. Now, in terms of counting the rows, you can use a, you know, some sort of um, stitch counter, for example. Uh, you can also um, count, you know, like the um, um, the stitches on the inside as well. It's up to you to do that. I usually tend to use a stitch counter myself, just, you know, a quick clicker, uh, just to, to, to keep myself straight there, because that way I can watch TV, listen to music, or make sure the cats aren't bringing my balls of yarn all over the house. Neelix has a tendency to take an end of the yarn as you're seeing right there and then he will take it you know through the first floor second floor under every piece of furniture and it's like trying to find a puzzle 
to uh, unravel. He is, is a master of getting into my cupboards and so forth. I'm starting to think I might need some baby locks to, uh, uh, to save myself from him in the morning and, and the, the th you know, the yarn disaster that I, w I whoa, 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 that I wake up, wake up to in the morning. Okay. Anyways, I'll come back after I finish the, 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 uh, the six, uh, the six, uh, rows and then we'll continue on from there. So again, we'll start with the last one there. And that's all you're doing every time you're doing a row. You always need to obviously have two rows. The bottom one goes on top of the top one. Yes, my boy. Oh, I love you too. Yes. So if I were to take a look here, okay, inside, I don't necessarily need to have a stitch counter, okay? So if I look up, all right, I have one, hold on, I gotta do it this right here. So I've got one row, two rows, three rows, four rows that I've done. Okay. So again, if you can, if you have, if you're, uh, if it's thick enough for you to be able to see, you can, you can decide that way. Okay. What I need to do is because I'm making a brim, this brim is going to be folded over. So whatever size of brim I want to have, I literally need double that. So if I've done four and this is the length that I've gotten so far, I think I'm going to do at least another four so that at least I've got a small brim, uh, when I do it. Okay. So let's keep going. Now at this point here, I don't need the slip knot anymore. It's not going to untangle. It's not going to untangle itself or uh, cause any unraveling. So I can just literally take it off the peg, okay, and just let it hang basically in. Oh, get it to hang inside here. Get it out of my way. There we go. Okay, so I can let it hang there. Uh, at the end, we'll you know we'll uh, show you what to, what to do to make sure that it's not just looking unsightly. Okay, so at this point, basically, we've gotten, uh, I've got done approximately, I think I did eight rows here. Let me just count here. So we've got, let's see here, let's find a straight line here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we've got eight there, okay? So what I want to do is I want to be able to flip it in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where the slip knot was, okay, this one right here, okay? And at the end of all of these, right, there's a loop. And so I want that corresponding loop to obviously go in order. I don't want, I, there should be one for each stitch that we did. So I'm going to take the loop here that has the, okay, that has the um, slip knot. I'm going to put it over number one. Okay, so you see where the peg is right here? I'm going to put this one over number one. I'm just going to stick the tail over here. Now, actually, you know what? Even better, uh, let's hide the tail. This is where we're going to hide the tail. Oops. Okay. So, give me a second here. I'm going to pull the tail through. All right, that first loop. All right, because I'm going to hide the tail as I go in. I'm going to actually cut a bit shorter too, instead of making such a long tail here. There we go. Okay. All right. So first loop. I'm going to put it over number one. Now the first couple might be hard to find, and then they kind of just all uh, fall into place. So I'm going to take the tail. I'm going to put it inside here. Okay. So as I'm flipping things over, it just hides itself and then we'll be knitting it and you won't know, you won't see it at all. Okay. So you'll notice. Okay. So that was loop number one, second loop. All right. And so I'm not sure if you guys can see second loop is this one over here. Let me do it. Instead of using my fingers, I'll try and do it with the hook here. All right. So second loop goes over here. I usually, as I said, do this with my fingers. Third loop over here. Fourth loop. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. So if you are going through, you should be noticing that basically you've got a line of stitches in between each of them. Okay. So you haven't skipped. All right. They should be fairly straight 
again, depending on uh, that you haven't skipped over uh, and used two of the same. You'll notice that something's bizarre otherwise. Okay, so I'm just going to use my fingers for the rest of this here. All right. All right. Oh, maybe the hook is better. Okay. There we go. There we go. one okay so they're all done now you'll notice okay that you have two rows now so I don't need to actually do an e-wrap for this one all I'm doing at this point is going to put one over the other to close this in and you'll notice that again my my slip cord that I put in or the slip knot it's in there it will be hidden okay so I don't have to worry about it anymore so let's go through very quickly okay and then just do the full amount. Now, once I've done the brim, okay, I will continue on to do my certain number of inches. And for the, uh, what am I doing here? For the newborn, I'm looking to five to six and a half inches. That will include my brim, okay? So, give me a second here. Now I do find that when I put it over, it is a little bit on the tighter side in terms of the tension. Okay, so it does make it a little bit harder to put it over the peg. Now again, that could be just the way I end up doing it and that causes me the grief because generally speaking, when I wrap it around, I try and wrap it around a little loosely so I do not have that issue. And you don't wanna be breaking your hook, obviously. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do my E-wrap and I'm just gonna keep going. So this is my brim right here, okay? Tiny little brim, all right? And I'm gonna do my five and a half to six inches and then we'll come back and I will show you how to finish off the hat, all right? So I left off a uh, little <laughs> couple seconds ago uh, to finish off the, the remainder length of the hat. Uh, I did it over, well, I, I did it I finished it actually today instead, as you'll notice, my outfit has kind of changed. Um, because again, if I do too much, for whatever reason, I tend to get very, very um, sore in this muscle here. So I don't know what it is that I'm doing because I, of this particular motion. So uh, it tends to get quite tense. So I don't know if that will cause you the same issue. But again, just, you know, don't overdo it. So now that I've gone to the end, I want to cast off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around now you will have noticed okay you remember how i started at this peg here okay and somehow my starting well the starting thread when i go around has gone to back here so i'm not quite sure how that happened it's quite possible that maybe i didn't wrap it all the way around and as you know as i went through it's kind of gotten further and further back again it does not like when you look at it I mean, it doesn't show any obvious issue here, okay? But, it, you know, if that happens to you, it's not the end of the world. You're doing a circular motion, okay? So that's that's not a big thing. You can always, you know, adjust, okay? So what I'm going to do to cast off is I'm going to take the, the thread. I'm going to go all the way around, okay? And I'm going to cut off that amount, okay? So basically... I'm going to use, you could use particular, uh, you could use a darning needle. I don't tend to do that. I tend to use my hook. Okay. Some people, what I've seen them do is that they will actually um, uh, thread the darning needle. And as they go through, they're kind of sewing up on the side. And then you kind of just cinch it at the end. Okay. What I tend to do is I do, tend to do the cast off. And then at the end, I cinch it. And then I just, you know, you kind of sew the, the end there. Either way works, whatever you find easiest for you. So you'll notice that every time we did our e-wrap, we would always kind of put on top and then we would uh, go over. That is not the case when you're casting off. So I'm going to lift all of these guys, okay, all the way around here. 
because as I cast off, I'm going to put the thread underneath this time. A sec here. And these pegs do come off, okay? Sometimes if you want to do some sort of pattern that, you know, requires a different amount of pegs or something like that, uh, they do come off and can go back on. I don't do that with mine for... I just do the hats and I do uh, slipper socks, actually. So I might do a video on slipper socks at some point. So what we're going to do here, basically, is I'm going to put it underneath, okay? And what I want to do is I want to bring this thread here and I want to bring it through. So what I do is I go under here, I scoop it through, okay? And then pull it through, all right? Now that one's cast off. I can remove it, okay? Then I do the next one. Okay, I go through the top, oops, all right, scoop it through the bottom here, all right, so it's going from underneath to on top. I'll do a few and then remove them, okay, so let's do three, for example, all right, all right, okay, and then I'm just going to remove them because these have been cast off. Okay, and then again, continue on. Now, generally speaking, I don't usually have to pull this stuff through. Hold on a second. I don't usually have to pull this stuff through with my fingers. I think this one, it's kind of, no, there we go. Okay. I think it's the looseness of the, uh, the ply on this particular yarn, because usually, as I said, I don't have to it through with my fingers it usually just comes on its own basically okay so then I'm gonna I've done these three they can come off all right Now you're going to do that until you get to the very last one. Okay. And I just kind of pull it along because otherwise you're going to at some point run out of uh, yarn. But now you'll notice that whenever I'm removing it, I always leave the last one that I did uh, attached. Okay. I just find it's just easier for myself to do that. All right. Okay, so we're going to remove these all now. Okay. There we go. All right, so we don't need our, our loom anymore. This is the good side. Okay, it's not this side here. This is the good side. Remember, we did, a, you know, we did the brim here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to turn it inside out. All right, so I can finish everything off. Why right, is this gold? Okay. I am going to, and this is very thick uh, yarn, so I'm going to try and, yes, my good boy. I'm going to have fun trying to, you definitely want a needle with a big hole. Now this needle came with the actual kit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch it up all nice and pretty, okay? And then basically I'm just going to, to sew it so that it it's basically stays together. So again, I don't usually, so I'll just kind of put in a few here. And again, those of you with a bit more sewing experience than me, I just kind of do all four sides to kind of just hold it together. Okay. It's not like I'm going too deep. I don't want to see it on the other side there. Okay. And then basically I'm going to knot it off. All right. Make a knot. Do that. Oops. And. Oh, hold on. There we go. Let's do. I don't think my knot held here. There we go. There we go. That. Okay. And I cut it off, turn it inside the right side out, and you got a little baby's hat.
Okay, now again, you can do this for, again, any size. Uh, the hoop size obviously changes, the length changes, and so on and so forth, but there you have it. Okay, and uh, you can make it obviously for people you know, you know, hospital charities and uh, other, you know, other types of charities that, uh, that uh, you're interested in. So I hope that helped, and have yourself a great day.